Hey guys, this is Landon with the Command Valley, bringing you another Commander Deck Tech. Thank you so much to GameGrid for sponsoring our channel, and if you want to check out their new and improved store, and support the channel while doing so, you can check out the link in the description below. We will have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right in their deck builder and purchase your singles there. You can head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. So Time Spiral Remastered is approaching its release date, and if you're unfamiliar with what this set is, it is a conglomeration of the four sets from the block of Time Spiral that's been specially curated by by Wizards of the Coast and condensed into one set that is completely full of reprints. And one of the legendary creatures that is from the original Time Spiral block that is seeing a reprint into the Time Spiral Remastered set is Dralnu Lich Lord. And it is a commander that personally I've been wanting to build for a really long time and I never quite knew if I wanted to pull the trigger on it and actually brew it since I've got another deck that is very similar to it. But with Time Spiral Remastered featuring it, I thought that was a sign that I'm gonna just go ahead and build the deck. Dralnu the Lich Lord is a legendary creature zombie wizard that costs three, a blue and a black. And he reads, if damage would be dealt to draw new lich lord sacrifice that many permanents instead there's a hefty downside but i promise his activated ability is totally worth it he can give target instant or sorcery card in our graveyard flashback until the end of turn and the flashback cost is equal to its mana cost so this is an incredibly powerful ability, being able to cast instant and sorceries from our hand and then use draw new to get a second use out of those spells is really powerful and this is obviously very similar to Kess Dissident Mage who lets you play one instant or sorcery card from your graveyard every turn. Now the differences between draw new and Kess are while draw new is more expensive and has a tremendous downside of if it's ever dealt damage you have to sacrifice a ton of permanents, he does have the slight upside of being able to cast spells on your opponent opponent's turn whereas Kess only lets you cast them during your turn. Now Dralnu also has to be out for a for a full turn cycle to get rid of his summoning sickness whereas Kess can just use her ability as soon as she enters the battlefield but I think Dralnu offers some other advantages that only a two color deck can offer. So obviously Dralnu really wants you to be playing a lot of instants and sorceries so as to really take advantage of his activated ability. So it might be a little bit obvious of what kind of deck I'm building for you today. It is going to be a storm combo deck that is very spell slingy that is looking to cast a tremendous amount of instants and sorceries and win through a number of different win conditions. Now you're going to really like this deck if you look at EDH as a type of puzzle and every single game has a different solution to the problems at hand, meaning there are lots of different ways that this deck can win. You have to find the right line and every, every game is going to have a different type of line to victory. Now this is a higher powered deck with a little bit of a higher budget. I gave myself like a $300 budget and I didn't get quite up to $300, but in any case, I really wouldn't play this into a meta where your opponents really don't have a lot of ways of interacting with you on the stack or at instant speed removing permanence on your side of the battlefield. Uh, otherwise it's just going to feel like solitaire and I don't think that's that satisfying. I think playing a deck with this power in an appropriate pod makes it all that much more fun and rewarding when you're able to combo through and win through lots of different interaction and stacks pieces. That being said, this isn't fully a CDH deck. I wasn't really intending on it being so. I was really aiming for that six to eight power level. And I think I think it's airing a little bit on the seven to eight, but so with all of that lengthy preamble out of the way, let's get into the deck list. Now, typically when I do my deck text, I like to start with the ramp because typically that does represent the largest part of the deck and it's good just to get that out of the way. But for this one in particular, I'd like to start with the win cons, kind of start with the end at the beginning because with those in mind, basically everything else in the deck is going to make a lot more sense. So the, the primary win con in this deck is going to be an Isochron Scepter Dramatic Reversal combo. Unfamiliar with that combo, Isochron Scepter is a two mana artifact that has an imprint ability, which when it enters a battlefield, you can exile an instant with two CMC or less from your hand. You then can pay two mana and activate Isochron Scepter's ability to cast the exiled card. You can then pay two mana to tap the Isochron Scepter and cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. So Dramatic Reversal is a two mana instant that says untap all of your non-man permanents. If you have enough mana rocks in play, this will go infinite. You can tap Ice Crown Scepter to cast the Dramatic Reversal, which will then untap the Ice Crown Scepter and all of your mana rocks. And you can do this infinitely, getting infinite mana and infinite storm. 
So from Infinite Storm and Infinite Mana, there, you should be able to win the game, but you still have to have some type of an outlet. So we do have some spells in the deck that you can dump that Infinite Mana into, such as a Blue Sun Zenith or a Pull from Tomorrow. And then from there, you can win with a Thassa's Oracle. I know it's not the most creative way to win, but it is really efficient. And the goal of this deck really is to win. So maybe in that regard, it is a little bit of a CDH deck, but I know a lot of folks are interested in playing really optimized and really tuned decks. So that's what I'm trying to deliver. The next combo in the deck is one of my personal favorites. I actually play this one in my Kess deck and I really like it. It's Bolas' Citadel with Necropotence or Divining Top. Now, for this deck, I put in Divining Top. Necropotence isn't in the deck. And I totally understand if the finding top is a little outside of your budget. However, I will say that if you are interested in building and keeping this deck for a while, that that investment is totally worth it. Divining top or Necropotence, they go in so many decks and they are a little expensive right now and they probably will see a reprint, but they've been reprinted a couple of times and it does drop their price for like a couple of weeks, but they always shoot back up to like that 30 or $50 range. So how this works is Bolasa Citadel lets you play the top card of your library and instead of paying the mana for it, you can actually use life to cast that spell. And the interaction that it has with Sensei's Divining Top is you can tap Sensei's Divining Top to put it on top of your library and draw a card. And you can then play it from the top of your library with Bolas' Citadel only paying one life. Now this is useful for several reasons. One is you're going to be casting Sensei's Divining Top a lot, which is going to give your storm count a significant boost. And since Bolas' Citadel does not let you play lands from the top of your library, Sensei's Divining Top acts as a way of clearing the top card of your library so you can keep casting more spells. And ultimately with this combo, we are hoping to hit a Tendrils of Agony, a Brain Freeze, or an Aetherflux Reservoir. Any of those spells is going to result in our opponents dying in some way or another. We can also hit a Mind's Desire with this, although depending on our storm count, that might not let us cast our entire library, but that's also a really good hit for that as well. Now, the third combo in this deck is one that I am actually really excited to test out. I didn't even know about this combo until I was researching uh, stuff on EDH Rec for this draw new deck. And it's actually a combo that requires pieces that this deck already was wanting to be playing anyways. And it's actually pieces that I have in my Kess deck. I, I had never saw this line before. So I really appreciate the folks over at EDH Rec putting in so much work to support the EDH format. So for this combo, you're going to need a primal amulet on the battlefield. And if you're unfamiliar with that, it's a four mana artifact that makes all of your instants and sorcery spells cost one less and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell you can put a charge counter on the primal amulet and then and then if you ever have four or more charge counters on it you can remove those counters and flip it over into the primal wellspring which is a land that can add one mana of any color to your mana pool and when that mana is spent to cast an instant or sorcery spell you can copy that spell and choose new targets for the copies so with the primal amulet in play with three charge counters on it and a frantic search and a narset's reversal in your hand the combo will go as follows. You're going to cast a frantic search at the reduced mana cost of one and a blue, which is going to let you draw two cards, discard two cards, and untap up to three lands. With the frantic search on the stack, you are going to let your primal amulet transform into the primal wellspring, as the frantic search will give it the fourth charge counter that it needs. And once that has been flipped over into the primal wellspring, you're going to use one blue from the primal wellspring and one from any other source to cast a Narset's reversal, which lets you copy target instant or sorcery spell and return it to its owner's hand, and you can choose new targets for the copy. So that's going to put two of those onto the stack, having used the primal wellspring mana, and you're going to use the copy of Narset's Reversal to target the original Narset's Reversal. The original Narset's Reversal is going to target the Frantic Search. But that original Narset's Reversal isn't going to resolve because the copy of Narset's Reversal targeting the original Narset's Reversal is going to give you a third copy of Narset's Reversal bouncing the original back to your hand. With the third copy of that Narset's Reversal, you will make a second copy of Frantic Search. You will let the copy of Frantic Search resolve, having the original back in your hand with Narset's Reversal, and the copied Frantic Search is going to let you draw two cards, discard two cards, and untap three of your lands, making sure that you untap your Primal Wellspring and two other lands. So the copy of Frantic Search with the original back in your hand is going to let you draw two cards, discard two, and then untap three lands, your Primal Wellspring and two other lands of your choice. The net result of all of these shenanigans and absolute gymna mental gymnastics to get to this point is one mana and you've drawn two cards and discarded two cards. You can repeat this loop 
over and over and over again until you've churned through your whole deck and made a ridiculous amount of mana and from that point you have several ways of winning your storm count is going to be tremendously high you can you can tendrils of agony you can aetherflex reservoir brain freeze whatever you want at this point it's pretty much game over and while this combo is very convoluted and there are a lot of points to interact with it and lots of ways that it can go wrong the strength of it relies in the overall card quality that it brings to the deck all of these cards are really good cards that you're going to want to be playing in this deck anyways primal wellspring can do way more than just you know act as a combo piece it's going to reduce the cost of all of your all of your spells throughout the game i mean the, i guess what i'm saying is all of these cards are really playable so there really isn't a loss in card quality including this combo into the deck i thought that i would just point this line out to you now at this point in the deck deck before i get into the rest of the cards in the deck that kind of make up the spell slinger shell i would just like to point out Dralnu's role in this deck Dralnu is not a super vital piece to the combos in this deck but he is an incredible card advantage engine if he is able to stick on the battlefield for longer than two to three turns he's going to give you so much value that's going to be really difficult for your opponents to keep up being able to get double usage out of a lot of your card draw spells or some of the tutors in this deck is going to be absolutely backbreaking and one of my favorite interactions that Dralnu will have with this deck is its is his interaction with bubbling muck and high tide if you're unfamiliar with these spells they're they're both one mana bubbling muck costing one black and high tide casting one blue and these spells let you double the mana production of your swamps and islands respectively so Casting this from your hand and letting it go to the graveyard and then using draw new to cast it from your graveyard with the flashback ability are going to let your lands tap for triple mana that turn, which is essentially a Nyx Bloom Ancient in Demir, which is super cool. All right, so now that we've got the win cons set in stone and we're figuring out what this deck is trying to do, let's go over the other cards I've put into this deck that are now going to make a little bit more sense. So let's now move into the ramp and acceleration and cost reductions that we have in this deck. So I'm going to start off with the cost reducers and we've already talked about Primal Amulet, but we've also got Burrell Chief of Compliance, which is going to reduce all of our instants and sorceries by one and Curious Homunculus, which can tap to add mana that we can only spend on instants and sorceries. But at the beginning of our upkeep if there are three or more instants and or sorcery spells in our graveyard we can transform it into the voracious reader which is essentially going to do what Burrell does make all of our instants and sorceries cost one less additionally it has prowess so if we ever get to do our narset's reversal frantic search shenanigans voracious reader is going to be one very big eldrazi homunculus which will smash face we're also playing a bunch of mana rocks with Arcane Signet, Charcoal Diamond, Demir Signet, Everflowing Chalice, Felwar Stone, Sky Diamond, Soul Ring, and Star Compass. Now we need to have a lot of mana rocks, and honestly, I'd probably want to put more into this deck, but the, some of them are pretty pricey. But the reason why we need so many is to make sure that when we get Isochron Scepter and Dramatic Reversal, we're not having to spend tutors for mana rocks that we can just combo off and win right there. We're also playing some rituals alongside the Bubbling Muck and High Tide, which people consider to be rituals, but we've got Cabal Ritual and Dark Ritual. And we've also got another really interesting ritual called Turnabout, which for four mana at instant speed gets to tap or untap all artifacts, creatures, or lands target player controls. This is a really good spell to copy with our Primal Wellspring or to hit off the top of the library with our Bulbasa's Citadel. I mean, it's just a really fantastic card and can give us a lot of mana in one turn. The next category that I would like to talk about in this deck are the cantrips and card draw spells. These are the cards that are going to help us churn through our deck and burn through cards so we can find the pieces that we need to combo off and win. So we've got Brainstorm, which is going to let us draw three and then put two back on top of our library at instant speed. Dig Through Time, which has a really high mana cost, but we can delve away cards from our graveyard to look at the top seven cards of our library. We're going to put two of them into our hand and the rest on the bottom of our library, and that can be activated at instant speed. We've got a Factor Fiction, which lets us reveal the top five cards of our library. An opponent gets to separate those into two piles. We're going to put one into our hand and the other into our graveyard. This works really well with draw new because it kind of forces our opponent into a really difficult situation where sometimes no matter what they give us we're going to be able to have access to them and forbidden alchemy is along those same lines we get to look at the top four cards of our library and put one of them into our hand and the other three are going to go into our graveyard we then have some cantrips which are usually low costed and give us a tiny bit of card draw so jataxian probe lets us look at an opponent's hand and we get to draw a card ponder lets us rearrange the top three cards of our library or we can shuffle them and then we get to draw a card we then have preordain which lets us scry two and then we get to draw a card and we have treasure cruise which is a very expensive but not expensive cantrip it's got delve 
just like Dig Through Time, and we get to draw three cards. We're also playing a pour over the pages, which lets us draw three cards, untap two lands, and then discard a card. Five mana is a little pricey for that, but we are playing a good amount of cost reducers for instants and sorceries, and sometimes that can even make us mana positive. And finally, we have Impulse, which at instant speed lets us look at the top four cards of our library. We get to put one into our hand, and the others go on the bottom of our library. The next part of this deck that I'd like to talk about is something that might not come up very much, but could be super powerful if it does happen, and that is the Notion Thief wheel lines that this deck has. So if you're unfamiliar with Notion Thief, it has flash, and if an opponent would draw a card, except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps, instead that player skips that draw and you draw a card. When I first read Notion Thief like years ago, I thought that it was just like an ETB trigger, like your opponents only lose that draw for the turn. It wasn't until much later that I realized it's a replacement effect and like it blows my mind how powerful this card is. And the most broken interactions with Notion Thief are with wheels because essentially what's going to happen is your opponents are going to have no cards left in your hand and you're going to have approximately a lot of cards in your hand. So you have Notion Thief on the table and then you cast a wheel and in this deck we're playing a couple we've got dark deal which each player discards all the cards in their hand and then draws that many minus one an echo of eons which can be cast from our hand and from our graveyard with flashback and then a whispering madness which is a more expensive version of windfall which we are also playing this isn't an infinite combo, but nonetheless, this can really end the game. With over 20 cards in our hand, depending on the wheel, there's not much our opponents are going to be able to, to do to recover. So for this next category, I'd like to talk about the ways that we have in our deck of finding the right card that we need. And there are some actually pretty good budget tutors that this deck can play. The first of which is Increasing Ambition, which for four and a black, we can search our library for a card and put that card into our hand. If Increasing Ambition was cast from a graveyard, instead we can search our library for two cards and put them right into our hand and then we shuffle our library. And, and obviously the flashback cost on this is seven and a black to compensate for the power of searching for two cards. But what's really cool about Draw New is when we give a card flashback in our graveyard, if it already has flashback, we can choose which cost to pay. So we can cast Increasing Ambition from our hand, search our library for a card, Increasing Ambition goes into our graveyard, maybe we find our Bubbling Muck, or maybe our High Tide, or, or a way to untap Draw New with like Turnabout. But, and then once we've searched for our two cards and Increasing Ambition is in our graveyard, on a later turn, we can use Draw New's ability to, to get around that eight CMC flashback cost to search our library for two cards and put them into our hand for only five mana, which is a killer deal. The next card that we're gonna be talking about is one of my favorite magic cards and is an absolute all-star in my cast deck, and I think it's gonna be an all-star here. It is Dark Petition. We can search our library for any card and put it into our hand and then shuffle our library, and it has Spell Mastery, so if there are two more instant or sorcery cards in our graveyard, we get to add three black to our mana pool. Now this is obviously just a powerful spell, and since we're in a spell slinger deck, we're going to have a bunch of instants and sorceries in our graveyard, not going to be hard to trigger that spell mastery. And if we are able to copy this spell with maybe our primal wellspring or maybe a swarm intelligence, which is another good replacement for primal wellspring if we aren't able to see it, we can search our library for two cards and add six black mana to our mana pool. That is almost enough mana to tutor for and cast Bolas Citadel and Sensei's Divining Top and start doing that combo right then and there. All in all, it's an amazing spell and I really feel like $3, which seems to me to be the current price, is super underrated. We also have a, another tutor in Wishclaw Talisman, which enters a battlefield with three wish counters on it. We can pay one generic mana to tap it and remove a wish counter from Wishclaw, ta Wishclaw Talisman to search our library for any card, put it into our hand, and then shuffle our library. And then we have to give control of the Wishclaw Talisman to an opponent and we can only activate this, this ability during our turn. So the idea behind Wishclaw Talisman in this deck is if we are using it on our turn to go and tutor for a card, more than likely that is the card we need to win the game right then and there. We also have another tutor in Mystical Teachings, which lets us search our library for an instant card or a card with flash, reveal it and put it into our hand and then shuffle our library. Also has a flashback cost of five and a black. So this helps us find Narset's Reversal. It helps us find Dramatic Reversal. It helps us find Frantic Search for that combo if we need it. So, or it can help us find a counter spell or a removal spell if we know that we're going to need that in the next coming turns or we need it at instant speed. So really flexible card and it's really good in the deck. 
And then we have Merchant Scroll, which lets us search our library for a blue instant card, reveal it, and put it into our hand. This card is in here specifically to find Dramatic Reversal or one of our Narset's Reversal Frantic Search pieces, whichever one we need in that scenario. And the final category for this deck before going into the lands is the Interaction Suite. So the cards in the deck that we have of interacting with what our opponents are doing, but also defend what we're doing. So we are playing some counter spells, but these are really defensive counter spells. We, we aren't actively trying to stop our opponents from doing what they're doing because we're really all in on what we're trying to do. So, so we are playing counter spell and muddle the mixture, which also is really good at tutoring for Isochron Scepter with its transmutability, a drown in the lock, which doubles as a kill spell, a negate, and a dispel. We're also playing some re spot removal spells in Reality Shift, Pongify, and Rapid Hybridization. In Ways of Board Wipes, we are a little light. We are playing an Aetherize, which can return all attacking creatures to their owner's library, and a Deadly Tempest, which is going to destroy all creatures, and each player loses life equal to the number of creatures they controlled that were destroyed this way. We are really light on, on Board Wipes, simply because if you are playing this into a higher power meta, maybe, typically you won't see a ton of creatures, and maybe somebody else will be able to deal with them too, because everybody is at danger when somebody has a Xenagos or another really, really, really aggressive deck. So, but with how many tutors we have and how easy it is to find instant and sorceries in this deck, I'm not super worried about that. You could simply tutor for that card if, if that's what you need in that moment. And in the close, let's go over the lands. There's not a whole lot to talk about here. I wanted to keep them mostly islands and swamps as to maximize the efficiency of bubbling muck and high tide. So we've got a clear water pathway, which is an MDFC from Zendikar Rising. And I love these cards are amazing budget cards. We've got command tower, ice tunnel, which is a tap land, but it's an island on a swamp, which is actually really good with high tide and bubbling muck. We've got watery grave, which is a shock land, island and swamp. We then have mystic sanctuary, which enters about battlefield tapped unless we control three or more islands and if it enters the battlefield untapped we can put an instant or sorcery card from our graveyard on top of our library this is a super great utility land and it's an island so it doesn't hurt our high tide count and with that, this deck is coming to a close. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's episode. I really hope that you enjoyed this deck tech and I hope that you have a blast playing this deck if you decide to build it. And just a couple quick reminders here in the close. If you are interested in purchasing any of the singles in this deck or just buying the deck, you can use our affiliate link in the description below to go through GameGrid to do so. It's a great way of helping out the channel. And if you're interested in supporting the channel directly and becoming a Patreon, you can head on over to Patreon slash Command Valley today to sign up and you get access to our discord merch exclusive content and a bunch of other perks and honestly we have such a great time over at our discord the patrons that we have there already are amazing and we have a ton of fun playing games together over discord so check that out if you're interested and with that i would like to give just a huge thank you to all of our subscribers and our patrons and the people that watch these videos we really appreciate you guys we couldn't do this without you and i hope you guys have an amazing week and enjoy your time spelled remastered pre-releases